Welcome to our Working with Portraits webinar designed to support School Annual Online. Our goal this afternoon will be to focus on the functions of program associated with school portraits. Specifically, we'll be reviewing printing class sheets uh, for other teachers or parents or other assistants to review and correct strategies for detecting duplicates, correcting student names, categorizing students, and using the flow function to create portrait images, well, portrait pages. This webinar will be approximately 30, 40 minutes, so let's get started. Uh, for those of you that might be having trouble hearing, you may want to log back out and log back in. And if you want to view full screen, just click on where you see the uh, the image right there. It should take you to full screen. Or right up the top where it says everyone, if you click that down arrow, you can click on who's talking. Or uh, and that should should show you there. Okay, so first we're going to talk about printing class sheets. So we're going to, from our home screen right here, we're going to go to Create. Then we're going to go to Image Library. From here, we'll click on Portrait. There's a little arrow right here that's pointing at Portrait. If you click down on it, it will show you all the subfiles underneath the Portrait. Here you can click on a class. If you come up to preview, when you click on preview right here, it will open the preview up in a PDF. And here in this PDF, you can print this off and send this to uh, the teacher, uh, the assistant, uh, staff member, whoever it may be um, that is helping you work on the page or who might be um, this, the teacher that can tell you who the students are, if the names are spelled correctly, if the names are in the correct, uh, correct class, um, if any changes need to be made, if it's a duplicate, uh, which one, most importantly, which class is, um, which photo is to be used, and which one is a uh, is the original, which one's a retake. All right, next, once we get that list back, we need to uh, make some corrections. Um, first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the coverage report right here. So we just went to create and then coverage report. Here's the coverage report right here. All right, and then right here, you will see we have the first name, last name, grade, all this other information right here. You can easily change a student's uh, name right here. So let's say that Emily is not spelled with an IE, it's spelled with a Y. And this will make the change on the student uh, very easily. So this way you don't have to uh, go in and try to find this one particular student. For those of you that can't hear, um, you've tried logging out and logging back in. Um, may want to check your settings and see if your audio is set to uh, computer, not phone. Or check your speakers, see which speaker is selected. All right, and thank you very much for the for putting that in chat too. And uh, if you would please remind them that they will receive a 
audio of this uh, recording as well. Okay, then right here we can also uh, check to make sure names are spelled correctly. Um, really just the first and last name. The rest of this information, like middle name, grade, homeroom, that is up to you to fill out. Um, the one that is, for most schools, is the important one is right here, the number of times in book. Um, here you can see how many times a particular person has been placed in the book. Um, I know there are some schools that want to make sure that the kids are represented equally as much as possible within the book. Um, so this is where you can make sure uh, that is happening. And we'll talk about how to tag photos here in a minute, because um, that's what this is looking for, is how many times that student is tagged. And like I said, we will actually uh, talk about tagging here in a minute. All right, so next we're going to go back to our image library. Now that we, we're going to say that we have our list back now and we can make some uh, changes here real quick. So here we have uh, an image that says we have duplicates right here. We have two of the same image. So we can either one, click on one or delete it, or we can click on the image and either click on this blue dot right here or this tag name. We can go to details and it says use portrait, but right here we can click on here and we can say, don't use portrait. We can apply changes and click done. Right here, it, you'll get a sign that says don't use. It will let us know that the system is not going to use um, this photo and it's going to, uh, just stay basically turned off right here. Next, we can see that we have uh, two people right here and we're actually, I'm actually gonna reset those here real quick. Okay, so next, um, for some schools or for some students, they may not um, they may not be able to have their image in the yearbook for uh, whatever reason there may be, uh, whether it's legality or whatever. They just cannot have their image uh, in the book. So if we have a situation like that, um, you can click on their image. You can come up to tag names, go to details. You can see, you can see that it says use portrait and it says use no photo. And we'll get a look at what that no photo looks like uh, when we go to start flowing. Apply changes and done. So what this will do right here is it will use a default no photo available, but the name will still appear in the flow. And like I said, we will look at that here shortly. So other things you can do is uh, you can look and see you have two of the same photo. One's a replay, well, one's a, a retake and one's the regular. So we want to keep this retake and we want to come down here, assign that to a do not use. There we go. And they may, you may get a uh, child once in a while. You'll get a student that's in a class that shouldn't be in a class, uh, whether it was a mistake on the index or it was just a an oversight or whatever it may be. To remove that child or to move that child, you can click and hold the image, and you will see this little like uh, transparent-ish image uh, attached to your mouse. But I still have it uh, the mouse button held. Then you can move to the next or the class they're supposed to be in, hover over their image, release the button, and you'll see their move, image has moved out of that folder and is uh, now in this one. All 
All right. Then next. So next we're going to talk about no photos. So we're going to come down here to our list of no photos right here. Is there a way to upload a photo if one is uh, if a student is absent that day? Yes, there is. We can, let's let me go back here. We can go up to upload right here and then you can upload your image. Um, in fact, I could just find a random image. So I can find a random image of a student. I can drag and drop it, or I can click Upload Image. Or if it's on Google Drive, you can cl click on Google Drive and access it. Then you can drag it right there. It will say Done. And then that student is now inside the class. If they're no longer in the class or they've moved to a different school, you can simply uh, click on their image, go up to tag name, and you can say, do not use the portrait and done. Or you can delete the image or you can come up here, click on portrait, add a right here and say, um, you know, You know, something like don't use. So you go back to that class. Click and hold that image. Come over to don't use. And just move it out of there. All right. So we're going to talk about no photos. We're going to come down here to our no photo. Uh, here you will have a list of different kinds of no photos. You, you want to use them. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name of this no photo right now. It's called name first. So we're going to click on this photo. We're going to come up here to tag name. Now, one thing uh, you want to do is you want to remove the tag. We want to break that tag. If we don't and we come up to this pencil and we change first to last and hit save. And then done, you will see now it says name last. This one says name last. This one says name. All these photos will will change. So if you try to add the C, the student, we're going to name it. That student, the missing student, and hit done. Now you can see all of them are Tom Moore. So if we come over to this one and try to name it. Then hit save and then done. Then you will see that now all of them say that name. So what we have to do is we have to click here, come up to tag name, and we're gonna have to break this tag. So we're gonna have to come down here to remove and we want to remove that tag. Click on add. name, save, and click on done. Now, um, one of the things here, if you're tagging a no photo and it's not there or it seems like it disappeared, the image, the image library puts names in alphabetical order. So that chances are that name might be down here at the bottom or might be here in the middle. So please check. Um, somewhere around here for that image. It didn't disappear. It just fell in alphabetical order. Once you have that, you can click and hold. We can come over here to our class and then we can let go. And then here's our no photo. If we have a brand new student that we just uploaded and we need to tag their name, um, right now they're not tagged because they have a gray uh, price tag looking uh, icon right here versus this one it has a green. Green means they're good to go. They've been tagged. Gray means they need to be tagged. So again, we go here. We go to add. All 
right? We hit save and then done. Again, the image falls into alphabetical order, so that's why it's no longer up here. It's now down here. All right, now that we're done with that, now let's go to flowing some of these images in. So we can go to plan and then page letter. And so to flow these images here, we're gonna go over here to the flow tab, which is located on the left. In this side, this flow tab, we have several different um, items we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about these six flow elements. Now you can click and hold one of these and drag them over. So here we have the names on the left. The counterpart to it is the names on the right, which is down below. We have names above the image or names below the image. We also have names next to each image on the left and of course the names on the right. So we're gonna pull one of these over and in our class, next we're gonna look at our category here. So we're gonna to go to Um, right here, we're going to go to the class. And under category, we're going to select the current one. Okay, name font is first last. We're going to keep that right there. And then we're going to see that we have 36 images right here underneath. Name. So we know that we need at least 36 of these boxes minimum to edit these boxes or to change the height, the width, or the number of boxes, because we don't need all of them. We're going to click on these uh, flow elements. This toolbar right here opens up above the page. If I click off of it, it goes away. If I click on them, it comes back. So here we have the name, the font. So we can change the fonts of these names. We can change the size of these names if we want to. We can also change the color, which we will talk about that uh, in the next uh, page. We can even add a border around the pages, uh, around the each image if we want to. We can bold the names. We can make them italic and underline them. Right here is probably the most important one, and that's your flow functions or your flow options. So we're going to click down the down arrow right here. First, we're going to click uncheck automatic, and here is why. As we reduce the number of rows, you're going to look and see that the boxes actually stay the same size. And as we reduce, they're going to stay within the um, already established uh, box right here. So that's why we want to uncheck that. Right. So by unchecking that, then when we reduce the number of rows, you'll see that the number of rows are actually the ones moving and everything else, all the boxes are staying the same. Next is your width and your height. Here we can change the width, but you if you get an error right here, just means that just means that these boxes cannot leave that the blue area right here. If we try to change it out, it just snaps back. It doesn't like to leave that blue area. So if we want to change the width, we would have to reduce by one column. And then we can probably play uh, here. We may have to reduce the width of the of the names right there. Now we can probably change the width of the, of the boxes. We can also change the height. Here we can add spacing horizontal or vertical. So we can add a little bit more spacing right here if we wanted to. Here you can add, you can change the shapes if you wanted to, uh, round off the corners. Um, for any reason, 
yes, you should all you should really make sure all your portraits are in there correctly, as far as the names that are tagged, your images are tagged, um, the spelling's correct, um, everything is in the right order before you flow. Also, you want to make sure that you uh, have the selected font that you want to use, the font size, uh, font coloring, borders, all of this before you flow. Um, you can include the names. You can turn off the names or, or include the names if you want. And some schools just like to have all the kids' images on there with, uh, without the names. But you can do that here under the name options. Once you have everything correct here, you can go up and click on the save button right here or file and save either one. Uh, real quick before we do that, you will see right here under where it says start and stop, it's uh, in red and it says 30 positions. Um, what this is telling you is that only 30 positions are available or if you change everything and you don't see this change at all, um, it means we have to save everything because the program doesn't know that changes were made until after things are saved. So we're going to come up here and save. And it still says 30, but we need 36, so we need six more. We'll just have to adjust this real quick. So we can reduce that, reduce that, add another one, maybe another column. All right, we're going to come up here to save. Oh, yeah. All right, one important thing, um, and I did this, uh, a lot of advisors do this. The start and stop right here is you want to start on the page that you're on. We're on page two right here. So we're on page two. So we want to start on page two and we want to stop on page two, or you can stop on page three, four, five, how many pages you want to go. In this case, we want to stop on page two. So after we hit save, then we can see that we have 49 available positions. From there, we can reduce, um, change the height, hit save. Now we have 42 positions. That's fine. It's okay to have a few more extra positions than you have images, and I will show you why. Once we have everything ready to go, we can come down to this uh, teal button right here. We can click on flow. So all the images flow in there with the names onto the sides. You can move uh, pages around, yes. Now here real quick, let's zoom in here, here. Okay, so real quick. So we had that one that we selected, no photo uh, right here. Here is a no photo available. The name is still there. This Robert is still there, but this is just the system's default no photo available. So here's our no photo and of course our new student. Now, if you have a student, um, so one of the things you can do is you can edit or can crop these images once they're in there. If you just select any one of these, you can double click. I'll get to that here in just a second. And I'll let you know how the teacher is first. So once we double click, up here in the upper right hand corner is the crop icon. So if we click on that, it isolates the photo. So here we can move this image over just a little bit. And now the student is centered a little more. Um, if you want to make sure they're all the same height, right up here is a ruler. And right up here, um, you can see the cursor changes. So you can click and hold right there and you can drop a red bar. Say you want it at this student's height right here. So here you can click on this student, move this. If we were able to, we can move the student down just a little more. Uh, we can click on this student and move them down or over a little bit more. Um, 
if you have a student that you want to zoom in just a little bit more, you can grab it and zoom in just a little bit more. So you can make those little edits right there. For any reason you need to take these uh, images out, you can come back over here and hit reset. It's right next to the flow button. Now, real quick, we'll talk about this right here. If you can have a student that joins this class, um, say the next few days, and you need to add them to this class, but you've already flowed, you can reset the flow. Uh, come over here to these boxes and double click on these boxes. There, the rest of these were just hidden. They're not gone, they're not disappeared, they're not anything, they're just hidden. So all we have to do is click on the upper right hand corner with this little eye, and it brings that spot back. You can also, if you wanted to, uh, you could just turn these off, and then when you flow, of course, don't forget to hit save before you flow. You can do something like that, put you know, a little bit of clip art, whatever you want in here. Um, You can, you know, have something like that, have letters, have, you know, be a little bit of creative. So that that's all up to you. So real quick, let's talk about why this teacher flowed first in the classroom. So this teacher flowed first because if we come over here and you can make adjustments uh, right here as well. If we click on this eye, it brings up a familiar screen. We saw this screen in the image library. We can click on details. This third one right here, type, is teacher. So if I was to assign this teacher as a student, apply change, done. You'll see that the teacher is now third. And that's because they are, that is a um, hierarchy. So this teacher is now on the same uh, plane as the students. So if I was to come over here and let's go back. So right here, teacher is basically number one, assistant is number two, students number three, and other is number four. So by clicking teacher, the teacher will flow first. And this student right here, if we list this student as other, and let's say we select a random student here, and we list this student as assistant. We'll reset the flow, reflow the page, and there we go. The teacher is first. The student that we assigned as assistant is second. This is student down here that we assigned as other is last, and everyone else in between is listed as a student. All right, and then before we leave the page, it's always a good idea to double check any duplicates, double check spelling, dupli uh, double check uh, placement, uh, make sure we have the students placed in the right order that we need them, um, such as like the teacher, the assistant and everything else uh, before we move on. Uh, next, real quick, we'll move on to uh, some little tips and tricks here. If you have a, a darker background, the Letters are in black ink by default. So some of the things you want may want to do is come up here to color and maybe select a lighter color. If you select a slightly larger font and you go to flow the, a class, let's say we'll go pick up the next class here. And That's not the result I wanted. There, there we go. Let's do that. That warning I'm getting is just telling me that I have more students uh, than I have spots for. So if you get a, uh, if you go to flow and you get a red X right here in the 
in the words. That just means that the text is larger than the box that it's currently in. So simply just reset the flow, click here, and then you can always go uh, down to 12, like right here. Or if you need to, you can click inside the box, click on here to 13, and you can take it down by one. So you can always adjust. Um, but right here, you can always change the text color too to counteract the, the background. And of course, you can always flow to uh, two pages. So we're going to come down here to the staff, and we got page six. So we can always say it's page six to page uh, seven right here. Click on flow. Oh. It just let me know that two uh, two teachers didn't have names. All right, and so right here, you will see that you can flow to two different pages. Uh, again, check your pages, uh, check your spelling, check all that stuff before uh, you move on to the next page. All right, and then okay. So let me get back to your questions here real quick. Can we add a background page? Yes, you can actually. Uh, real quick, you can go to Edit, Change Background. You can either choose an image or choose a regular background right there and then it changes the background you can explain what start and stop does again yes so what the start and stop does is it's asking you what page do you want to start on and what page do you want the flow to stop on so here in this case, we want the page, uh, we want the flow to start on page six, and we want it to stop on page seven. Um, for schools with larger, like senior classes uh, that have like hundred kids, you can say um, stop on page, you know, all the way up to page ten if you want to. So yeah, I think I answered that one. Yes, you can move pages around. Uh, in page mover, you would create and then page mover right here. You can change those around. How did the teacher automatically come to the first spot? I'm having trouble with that. Um, so sometimes the teacher might be listed as a teacher. Um, other times it might be just defaulted as a student. You can change that in the image library right here. You can go to a class and you can find the teacher. Oh, uh, here she is right here. So you can find the teacher. You can click. Now, remember, the image library is alphabetical order. So you can click on this one, go up to tag names, details, type. Of course, this one was listed as a teacher. And done. Um, if you go to this class and what do you find? Here she is right there. Tech names, detail here, the type. She was listed as a student. So, what we have to do is click on that, list them as a teacher, apply a change, and done. All right, at this time, um, I'll open it up to any questions. If you have any questions, you can either ask them or you can type them in uh, chat. Like I said, this video, uh, video will be available um, on our YouTube channel. I'll send a link out to everyone who signed up. And we have additional uh, tech tips on our YouTube channel as well. Yes, uh, you do need to get all the portraits and the names correct before you flow. That will make life a lot easier. Um, 
So to definitely make sure that you have all your images um, and, their, and the names are spelled correctly and assigned to the correct student. Because um, sometimes when we're looking at your books, that's some of the things that we are looking at is to make sure that the same name is not used like six different times. Um, names, the student name is actually showing up uh, on the page. I, I've seen a couple that it was first name, last name for every student. How can we print the pictures? How you can you print the pictures? Uh, if you click on the class right here, go up to preview, click on preview, and it's going to open it up as a PDF, just like this. And then all you have to do is just click the printer icon right here and you can print this off and either take it to the teacher make sure everything's correct or give it or just put them in their box or something like that so yes yes you will get a, a link to this video and um, you can always go to our uh, youtube video just by going to youtube and searching school annual by justin's Yeah, to uh, before flowing. So yeah, so uh, actually, let's go here. Uh, quick tip right here. If you go to create a new page designer, it'll actually take you back to the page you were just on. Yep. Okay, so right before you flow, you can uh, take a look at the image right here. There's a little circle with the letter I right here. So if you click on that, it will bring this screen up. And here you can go to details um, and you can say like, oh, that's right. I, I'm not supposed to be using that uh, photo right here or they're not supposed to have their image and you can do that. Um, here's where you can also uh, break the link and you know, add a name right here. First name, last name. Actually, I can give her a name. So it's going to be also curious to see if you can duplicate an image if you need it to be used in the same place. For example, a teacher. Yes. Um, we do have a case like that where uh, they want the teachers in with the students and they want them in the staff as well. So what you can do is you can click on this image right here. Um, you will have to download the image by clicking the download button right here. Then once you have that image downloaded, you'll have to come back to staff, click on upload and then upload that teacher. Uh, to the staff, make sure you tag that teacher first uh, before you do any flowing. Um, that is totally up to you. The first uh, three or four pages, it's 100% um, up to you. The, the whole book is yours to design as you wish. Um, you can have the first page. What? This would be better. Um, you can have the very first page as um, just a simple image. Uh, the next page could be a dedication page. It could be a list of uh, staff that's retiring or new staff to the current year. Uh, it could be anything you want. Uh, yes, so on the YouTube channel, we do have all those instructions right here. It's simply like adding staff, um, missing page letters, switching pages, uh, saving a template, stuff like that. So you can do it there. All right, then real quick, I'm going to read this outro and um, 
if you have, still have any more questions, uh, I can answer those. So just give me a second here. I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. The demonstration of, of the functions related to the creations of portrait pages should eliminate some of the trial and errors that can occur when working on a yearbook. Printing portrait sheets and editing class data ahead of time can result in better accuracy on some of the most important pages of a book. Feel free to join us uh, next time as we look at creating activity pages and candid pages. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you haven't signed up for creating pages, uh, please do so. If you haven't signed up for probably the most important important one, um, I feel, and that's the final stages where we talk about uh, completing your book and what to look for when completing your book. Um, the one that will save you probably the most headaches. Uh, make sure you please sign up for that one as well.